Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing another story time. And <laughs> it's going to be a part two of my last story time. So if you haven't watched it, my story time where I said it was the worst day ever, go and watch that video first before you get into this one. It'll help you understand this one a little more. So before we even get into it, <laughs> let me just say this. I know a lot of y'all are going to say, why would you go back and just listen? Just listen, okay? Do not be judgmental because we have all, we've all been there before. Us, I'm talking to you, girl. We have all been there before. So without further ado, let me just jump in and tell y'all what happened. I don't know what I'm going to name this video, but... <sighs> It's a mess. So boom. If you watched the last video, you'll know I left me and the guy we didn't talk, whatever. So let's fast forward to like a week later. <laughs> so I'm the type of person I don't like to I don't like to leave things on like bad terms with people. So I said, you know what? Let me just reach out to him and just get some clarity on his his take on the situation why did i do that Ugh. and don't mind me y'all i'm just drinking a coffee so i reached out to him we started talking and i'm not gonna lie to y'all i was bored i really was i was bored i didn't have nothing else to do I knew I was going to be on vacation. I took a week off of work. I knew I was going to be on vacation. And I wanted something to do. Straight up. I'm not even going to lie. So I said, you know what? Let's see. Let's see what I can get into. I'm bored. I don't have anything else to do. I pretty much not know this guy, but I know him. I know that if I spend my vacation with him, it's going to be a good time. So, and listen, girls, if y'all are listening to this, don't, don't follow behind me. Don't, don't follow behind me because I, I just be doing stuff. Sometimes I just be doing stuff and I know better, but like I said, I was bored. So anyways, we talk, everything's fine. So we made plans. <laughs> we made plans. I was going to go and visit him and stay for, I think like a day or something like that. So boom, I go down there everything is fine we've been on like multiple dates i've been going to stay at his house for the weekends everything is great so let me tell you where shit starts going left buckle your seat belts <sighs> so he is um he's nigerian and he is very family family oriented very friend or like he's his friends and like everyone is treated like family so one of his good friends um him and his girlfriend they just recently had a daughter and they invited me to they had they had they have a party for everything so they had a party to where they were going to introduce the baby to the family and friends people who haven't met the baby yet so he invited me red flag number one if you remember the video from when I first said, I was a little frustrated because why are you so quickly trying to bring me around your friends? Now, mind you, me and him already had a conversation and yet here again, here we are doing this again, like a bozo. I fell for it. I went for it. Can't even be mad with him because I went for it. Now, mind you, this particular weekend everything he planned it was supposed to be a surprise it was supposed to be something for us to have fun but here he come with this shit again and he wants to take me around his family and friends and people and sh show me off so this time around i say you know what i don't have anything else to do on board let's just go and see like see what happens let's just go so i go had a great time um it was fun it was a good party um the only thing like all of the music was african so it wasn't any music that i know um 
But overall, it was an amazing time. Everyone was extremely friendly. It was just different than what I'm used to, but I, I still had a great time. Um, so we end up leaving there. Um, and I think like the, what do we do? The next day we actually went to church together. So to me, this was, this was, I don't know. It was like, okay, well maybe he's trying to redeem himself. We went to church. We had a great time. Issue, second issue that arose. There was a restaurant that I told him I wanted to go to. Um, he said, yeah, I'll take you. Now, mind you, he was supposed to take me the day prior, but he went and got his hair cut. So he didn't have enough time. Okay, fine. I understand things happen and things come up. Y'all, if I'm looking like behind, if I seem like I'm looking behind, I'm looking in the mirror to see how I look. Don't mind, don't mind me, y'all. So the next day, that Sunday, he was supposed to take me after we got out of church. Well, I asked him to see if the restaurant was going to be open. He said it was. So instead of him saying, okay, well, you know what? I promised her. I told her I was going to take her here. We're going to go here. He wanted to stand around after the church and do what? I'm not exactly sure. So by the time we leave, the restaurant's closing in like an hour. Mind you. It's only going to take us like 10, 15 minutes to get there. So we would have had more than enough. Well, we would have had 45 minutes to eat. All I wanted to do was get the food and leave. I didn't even want to sit down and eat. This man told me, we're not going to have enough time. I said, okay, cool. On top of that, let me tell you what, what the third thing that he pulled. On our way leaving there. He tells me, hey, so tonight I promised my mom that I was going to take her to, to um, her meeting. So, yeah, you're going to be at my house by yourself. Why are you just not telling me this? I've been here for, what, two or three days? You knew I was coming. So why didn't you feel the need to tell me this prior? And then he starts up with the whole nonsense of, well, I know you're not going to want to sit here by yourself. Like, do you want to just leave and go home? So this time he's not telling me to go like his everything. He's not telling me to go home. He's just kind of he didn't want me to be uncomfortable. And I'm not going to lie, I had an attitude because I feel like if me and you made plans together, you should stick to your word and keep our plans. Why now are you trying to change things? Um, eventually, I got over it. Fine, whatever. So the weekend after that, well, the week after, no, there was like a week in between. And then the week after that, I was supposed to be coming and staying for, uh, I think like four, four or five days, something like that. I was supposed to leave on Monday. Um, things changed. I ended up actually coming early Saturday night. He was so excited, so happy to have me there. Um, I was, I'm not gonna lie. I, like I said, I was bored. I wanted to get out of the house. I just wanted something to do. And I knew that I would <laughs> be straight up. I knew I wasn't gonna have to pay for anything. I knew it was gonna be a good time. I knew I was gonna do something adventurous, something different. I knew that he was gonna show me a good time pretty much and that's what this is exactly what my ass gets for wanting to have a good time like I said do not follow me y'all do something different so I go there Saturday night everything's fine now mind you I never said what his profession was but I did say that he's in the medical he's in the medical field um and his job he does he has very like long grueling hours and he works a lot. So another issue that arose is he knew that I was going to have this time off of work. He was supposed to put in to take time off as well so that he could, we could spend time together. He didn't put in the time. And he waited until, he waited till probably like a couple days before to actually tell me. So now I'm a little aggravated. Because now I feel like you just want me here just for comfort. You just want someone here with you. And I feel like you he should have taken off of work, 
but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue about it because I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna make sure I have a good time either way because I'm relaxing I'm I'm just gonna have I'm gonna have a good time and I'm gonna make the best of things so that's where my mind state is so I go there Saturday night um did he work Saturday night I think he did work Saturday night um actually okay so his how his schedule is he works Sunday Sunday Wednesday Thursday Sunday Wednesday Thursday Saturday so he works four days a week yeah I think yeah he works four days a week so he's off Monday Tuesday and Fridays he's off but how the schedule fluctuates, it's, okay, so let's say one day he'll be working, he'll go to work at, in the evenings and come back home in the morning. So on like a Thursday, okay, so Fridays he's off, but how his schedule is, Thursday he will go to work at night, he won't get back till in the morning. So technically he has Fridays off, but he has to get back up Saturday and go to work early in the morning. So it's not really, it's, it, I wouldn't, you're off, but you're not really off if that makes sense. So his really main days off are Monday and Tuesday. So I'm going to me, he had, I guess, signed up to work on, what was it? Monday. Yeah. He signed up to work on Monday. Mind you, I already told you guys he's off on Mondays. Why he decided to sign up, I have no clue. So now I'm aggravated. So I come, mind you, now let's back up. I went there Saturday. So he's working Saturday, Sunday, Monday, off Tuesday, works Wednesday, works Thursday. I was supposed to be going back home Thursday. So there's only one day that he has off. So basically... We have to plan to do things around his schedule and you know he works he works long shifts he has like some days are more stressful than ever, others so he has like a grueling work day so at the end of his day he's tired and I'm not the type of person where I'm selfish like I may want to spend time with you but if I know you just worked all these hours I'm not gonna try and drag you to go here I'm gonna let you sleep and then if we spend like two hours together, okay, that's cool. That's fine. I understand what it is you're doing. And I understand that his job is extremely important and he's dedicated to his job. So I have to respect that because if the roles were reversed, when it comes to my job, you're going to respect, like you're going to respect my time. So that's one thing that me and him, we kind of, we agreed on, we got along about. And he really, he liked that I was very understanding when it came to his job. So, I, of course I'm upset, but I'm just trying to make the best of it. So, normally what he would do, he would go to work. When he gets off of work, he would probably lay down, sleep for like two, three hours. Then he would get up, we would go eat food, um, hang out, just do whatever. Um, like one day we went to go get ice cream and we sat out at like this waterfront park, just, just having a good, just normal stuff, walking around, spending time with one another. That was one day that we did that. All of the other days, so Saturday, Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, he didn't want to do anything except sleep. So we would eat, come back home, um, he would sleep, just lay around, not really do anything. I have a problem with that because it's like he's tired. I understand. So let me tell you where it was kind of like, you know what? I think it's about time for me to go home. So was it Sunday night? It was either Sunday or Monday night. We hang out. We have a good time. Everything is going great. It's perfect. This is after we did like the waterfront Um we sat in front of the waterfront, we ate dinner, we had ice cream, walked around, like just having like just regular stuff. After that, we got back to the house. I wanted to take a shower. I had told before we even like made it home, I said, I'm going to go when I get in the house, I'm going to take a shower, probably curl up, find us a good movie to watch so we can just chill, like just cuddle, have a good time. We get there and instantly 
he goes in the room and he's on the phone. His sister calls and invites him to come over to watch a soccer game. Now, let me backtrack to the party that we went to for the little baby. His sister was there as well. And he basically wanted me and his sister to kind of get along and get to know each other and have a conversation. And he told his sister, hey, come sit next to, to me. Come sit next to her and you guys can have a conversation. Mind you, this lady does not know me. The only thing I've done is said, hello, hi, how are you doing? Introduce myself in this and a third. This lady, she toots up her mouth like this and turns her head. Doesn't know me, has never had like a full sit down, nothing. So from that point on, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say I had a sour taste in my mouth, but I kind of felt like she doesn't like me. And one thing about me, I'm not kissing nobody's ass for them to like me or get along. I'm not, I'm just not going to do it. And she did it twice. So I just kind of felt like, yeah, that's kind of a lost cause. If she does come around later on in the future, then that's cool. But for right now, I'm just going to give her space and just focus on me, like, we just met each other. We're trying to get to know each other. We're having a good time together. So I feel like there's really no need for me and his family to be best buddies already. Like there's no reason. So back to the story. So when he tells me that his sister wants him to come over there to watch soccer, I immediately say, oh no, that's okay. I'm not going. He said, are you sure? Are you sure you don't first? Because at first he asked me, he said, yeah, I'm about to go somewhere. Do you want to come? And I'm like, no, I'm about to get in the shower, yada, yada, whatever. But then he tells me where he's going. I say, no, absolutely not. No. And not only that, me and him had a conversation after um, we went to that party. And, and his sister asked about me. And there were words exchanged between him. Long story short, she said some, she said some slick shit on the phone concerning me. And he came back and told me like a chatty Cathy. That should have been a red flag for me to just kind of, it was so many red flags, but I just, like I said, I was bored. I was being hard headed and I wanted to have a good time and it serves me just right. <laughs> so I knew I wasn't going to go. So he went the whole time he's there. He wants to FaceTime me. If you're there with your friends and family, what you need to FaceTime me for? Have a good time, sweetheart. I'm here. I'm curled up. I did exactly what it is I said I was going to do, which is take a hot shower, curl up, and find a movie. Mind you, it got to be like 10 o'clock. I said, you know what? I'm a little tired. I'm just going to go like lay down in the bed. So he keeps FaceTiming me. They're having drinks. Um, they're they having a good time. I'm happy for them. So I guess he kind of felt some type of way comes back home around like 11 wakes me up wants to talk and chit chat whatever okay i go along with it whatever and eventually we go to sleep cool so fast forward to when was it tuesday so he had worked monday night remember i told you he had signed up to work on his off day monday so he didn't get home until he was supposed to get off of work at like seven i think and but after that he was supposed to have a meeting he didn't stay for the meeting next thing i know he comes to the house at like six something in the morning waking me up and i'm not gonna say i was aggravated but it was just kind of like why are you you see i'm asleep why are you coming in here waking me like what's the reason just because you're up you want me to be up with you so i'm the type of person once i'm up that's it so i just go ahead i get up brush my teeth um, make up the bed and stuff, straighten his room, stuff like that. I go and sit in the living room where he is, and all of a sudden, he's gone. What he's doing or where he went, I have no clue. Mind you, when he came in to wake me up, he didn't say, oh, good morning, how are you? Nothing. So instantly, I'm just kind of like, what's up with him? And that's another thing that was a red flag. How can your mood switch so quickly? It's like one day... It's baby this, baby that. Come on, let's hold hands. Let's do this. The next minute, you're just so independent and 
you're just I don't know you're just in a totally different space that's another thing I don't like I like consistency so it was kind of like you know what I'm I'm not really feeling it I'm just like whatever I'm tired of going on like the roller coaster of emotions with you whatever so um eventually he sits um he comes back we sit down or whatever he says that he has a delivery coming um he had ordered some stuff I, he needed help with one of the items that he had ordered I guess it was a really big item I had no idea what it was so I said okay cool I'll help you whenever it gets here so I go get in the shower get dressed put on clothes we're just sitting down having a conversation looking at tv everything is fine we're back to the same vibe so as we're having a conversation um we start talking about we were actually looking at love and hip-hop like the beginning seasons where it was like with Chrissy back in New York and all of that so we're looking at that and we basically just start having a conversation about how sometimes women are in long-term relationships with men and they don't get married and he's saying his opinion and in my opinion he's extremely judgmental and it seems like the people who have the most to say they have the most like stuff going on with them and I, I tell, this is something that I told him a lot. Why are you so judgmental into other people's lives? Like, I don't, I don't know that it just, it really turned me off. And I would try and get him to see things from a different perspective or try and give him a different way of thinking about things. And he just wasn't, his mind was just very closed off to a lot of things. He was just judgmental and stuck in his ways and very set in his ways and how he viewed things. And after a while, it was kind of like, I'm not going to continue to have this same conversation because I felt like we would have conversations. But you know, when you don't agree with something that someone else has said, you just agree to disagree. He wanted to debate about it. Like we would debate about everything. We debated about um, how kids should be raised. Um, we debated about like divorce. And like, for instance, we were talking about... Um, marriage one day and he was basically saying that he feels as though the reason why the divorce rate is so high is because people are people don't want to put in the effort to really work on the marriage which to a certain extent I agree but I kind of gave him the idea of well back in the days our grandmothers they had to put up with a lot of stuff that today a woman is not going to put up with like no I'm not going to say no woman, but nine times out of 10, a lot of women are not going to sit back, sit in your house, cook, clean, and no woman is, no woman is going to be doing that. And you got a whole family on the other side of town. No woman is going to be okay with that. But back then they had to be okay with that because a man was their primary source of income. A man was everything to them. Nowadays, women have so many options and choices that it's kind of like, no one's going to put up with that. And that was just one example that I gave to him. He said that he thinks that women, women nowadays, we have too many, we think that we have too many options and that's why we can't keep a man. Now, mind you, this is coming from a man who is 36, almost 37 years old. He's never been married. He does not have any kids. He's never even lived with a woman. He's had a long-term relationship, but it didn't work out and so in my head now everything is starting to click and I'm gonna be straight up I feel like the reason why he does not have a wife why he doesn't have any kids why he's stagnated is because of his state of mind there is not a woman on God's green earth I'm not gonna say that but there's a there's a certain type of woman that would have to deal with him and it would have to be someone that is young inexperienced does not have a mind of their own and is willing to accept whatever it is that they're being like i that's that's the only type of person that would be happy and okay with him because he's just he's a lot he's a lot to to, to and he's just a lot and the more we talked it just made me kind of realize like yeah you're not really the person for me. And I had already said in my head, after this like little vacation, I'm going to stop talking to him because I don't like his state of mind. I don't like the way he thinks about things. And another thing, 
he likes African-American women, but he would say things um, like we're ghetto and he would just say he would say a lot of stuff that would make it made me feel like he he liked African-American women, but he didn't really like us. He liked the idea of it, but he didn't really care for us. Like everything, everything he would just say it's ghetto or it's ratchet or it's this and that. He would like, he would just say all types of derogatory stuff. And I would come back with a rebuttal and here we go. We're in a debate again. So I was like, you know what? I'm tired of that roller coaster. Like after this vacation, after this like little like rendezvous that we got going on, I'm not coming back. I'm not dealing with you because your state of mind is so fucked. Like, Mm -mm, I ain't coming back. So, anyways, back to the story at hand. Because, y'all, I get so off track so quick. <sighs> so, he has the delivery coming. It's a pool table. And not like a little cheap rinky dink. It's like a very expensive, a very heavy pool table. These are my nails, y'all. This is how long my nails are. He struggled picking up the pool table. What the hell makes you think that I'm going to be able to help you lift it? If you struggle to like just drag it. He gets the pool table. He takes it out of the box. Takes all the stuff out. I'm helping him take like the legs, the balls. Taking everything out. Putting it in the house. Like organizing everything so it's nice and neat. Okay, cool. So. It's time to move the pool table. And he stands it up. All I had to do was kind of lift it and drag it inside. Y'all, I'm not going to lie. It was so fucking heavy. I couldn't even lift my side. Like, that's how heavy it was. And I basically told him, like, I'm not going to be able to lift it. But what we can do is, since you want to get it in the house, is we can lay it on, like, one of the little cardboard pieces that it came in and drag it inside. So all you have to do is just lift it up and I can slide the cardboard underneath. He said, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, yeah, I know, I came up with it. But okay, yeah, let's go. So I'm still trying to help him. He basically gets upset with me because I'm telling him like the cardboard, you can't like, it can't be bent, it's wider than the doorway. So we're gonna have to try and like rig it up some type of way so that it can fit underneath there or maybe cut it down so he's getting frustrated he got upset and he was just like he was just being snippy with me like snatching shit out of my hand and I was like I should have told him if you want me to help you then you need to talk nice to me be nice to me or you can figure it out on your own he said okay go upstairs <laughs> Everything that was in my hand, I dropped it, turned around, and walked straight upstairs. You don't got to tell me twice. You're not going to be rude and disrespectful to me. You asked for my help, number one. Number two, why didn't you tell the movers who brought it here? Why you didn't tell them to help you? Those are big, strong men. Why can't they help you? Hmm? Why can't they help you? Why you couldn't pay somebody else to help you, but you want me to help? <laughs> no. And you think you're going to talk to me crazy? Fuck no. So I go upstairs. I sit down. I'm on my phone. I'm like, I'm frustrated. But I'm like, you know what? I really just want to enjoy myself. I don't feel like arguing with him. I just want to have a good time. So he comes upstairs. He finally, I don't know what he did, but he finds a way to get it in there. And he comes upstairs. Doesn't say a word. Doesn't say, I apologize. I'm sorry. You know what? I was a little snippy with you. Yeah, nothing. Goes and gets in the shower. And had the audacity to turn on gospel music. Alright, whatever. So I just ignore him. Because I'm like, you know what? He's so fucking childish. And I already have it in my head that I'm not coming back. So it doesn't even matter. So he gets out the shower. Puts his clothes on. All this other stuff. Gets ready. He comes into the living room where I'm at. And it's like, yeah. I'm going to go run a few errands. Yeah, I got to get my tire looked at. But I'll be back. What the fuck are you talking about right now? What? I'm a guest here in your house. 
What do you mean you're going to go run a few errands? That's not what you say. You say, the boy, the polite thing would be, hey, babe, I have a few errands I need to run. You want to come with me? Then, five minutes later, he's he's running around the house, like, looking for stuff. Excuse me, y'all, my eye itching. He's running around the house looking for stuff. And then he's like, oh, yeah, I have to go to my meeting at work first. So are you saying that you have to go to your meeting at work because you don't want me to ask to come? Like, what is it? I said, okay, I ain't gonna argue with you. I don't feel like arguing. Like, all right, cool. I guess he wanted me to say something else. I'm not gonna say anything. Whatever you wanna do, you go ahead. You do that. You got it. So he gets ready to leave out of the house. He has his little flip-flops in his hand. He walks right out of the door. I say, hey. He says, huh? I say, so you're not gonna say bye? I'll see you later. Have a good day. Bitches, you still breathing? You're not going to say nothing? I kid you not. Everything I just said, he repeated it back to me like he was mocking me. I said, oh, okay. Well, do you want me to lock the door when I leave? Do you want me to lock the door behind me when I leave? He said, huh? I said... Do you want me to lock the door behind me? He said, oh, what are you talking about? I said, I'm going home. You think you're going you gonna, to you gonna invite me somewhere, treat me crazy, and then have me sitting in the house like I'm a caged animal? And you think I'm going to go for it? <laughs> I don't know who you've been dating and what girls you've been having over here. But this ain't that. This is not that at all. This ain't that, sweetheart. So he says, yeah, yeah, you can. He looks like he's ready to cry. He's so confused. He don't know what to do. And I knew it. I knew he was this type of man. I knew he was the type of man that he is so used to having girls, like, conform to whatever it is that he says because of his money and his, like, his job title. I knew that he was that type of guy, but I really just, I was just being dumb. I ain't going to fall for it. Just trying to have a good time. And look what trying to have a good time got me in the same mess that I was in the first time. So as soon as he um, says, yeah, I get up, I start um, going around the house, gathering up shit, doo, 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 smile on my face, just as happy, just as cool as that, cool as a cucumber. He don't even know what to do. He just walks outside. <laughs> I say, you sure? When he gets ready to walk out, I say, you sure that's what you want? He said, uh, I don't I don't have time to go back and forth. I said, oh yeah, he mad now. He mad because he can't control the kid. He mad. Ha <laughs> ha ha. in the boo boo. Ha ha ha. He mad. So I'm just like, I ain't got time for this because I'm trying to be on something completely different. And I will literally clown and act a fool. And I just don't want to like... It's not even worth it at this point because your mind is so like, your mind is like this small, like the size of a little pea. You can't even understand what it is that you can't even comprehend why what you're doing is wrong. You can, you don't, you don't even understand it. So it's like, there's no reason for me to even like get upset with you. It's like getting upset with the baby. There's no reason to, they don't understand. He don't know no better because if he did, his circumstances would be different. So Let's just get the story on with because now I'm getting mad again. So I pack up all my stuff and leave. I wait till um, I'll go fill my car up with gas. Um, I actually stopped. I went shopping. I bought my daughter some clothes. I bought all type of stuff. I had a good old time. I just had me a nice little outing. And yeah, so I finally texted him a couple hours later once I finally made it to my mom's house. Because um, I was just going to stop by, hang out with her or whatever. So I finally text him and I'm like, yeah, and I'm going to post um, some of these text messages I might post. Yeah, I'll probably post post a little picture of them. So I was like, yeah, um, are you still in your meeting? Are you done with your meeting? He said, no, I'm not. I said, OK, well, call me when you're done with your meeting because we need to talk. He said, are you home? I didn't even respond. So if you're in your meeting, which he just said that he's not done with his meeting, 
why the fuck are you calling me? What are you calling me for? Handle your business. So he calls me and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I say, I say, you said that you're still at your meeting. It's okay. We can talk after because I don't want, like, I don't want your mind to be clouded while you're at work. Regardless of whatever is going on, I'm not that type of girl. I don't like to be stressed, so I'm not going to stress somebody else. That's just me. I have that type of, con I'm just not that girl. So he's like, oh no, you said that we need to talk. So come on, let's talk. Either you want to talk or you don't. Just being sassy. It being a sassy ass bitch. Just being sassy. <laughs> so instantly, I'm just laughing in my head because it's like, I already know how this conversation is going to go. He's not going to like what I have to say. He's going to get defensive. He's going to get mad. He's going to be combative and he's going to want to debate. I'm not going to debate with you. And the more I ignore what he's doing, the childish shit that he's doing, the matter he's going to get and he's going to blow up just like he did last time because he can't control his emotions. He's too fragile. And exactly what I said happened. It happened. So we're having conversation and I pretty much told him that he's extremely selfish. He's self-centered. Um, he's, he's emotionally immature. Um, and I explained to him how he said that everything that I say, it doesn't, it doesn't equal to him being selfish. And basically he said that the reason why I wanted to leave is because I had a guilty conscience because of what I did. I said, what exactly did I do? He said, because I invited you to come to my sister's house and you didn't. You're mad because I didn't want to come sit in your sister's funky ass basement and listen to like music. That's what you're mad about. Sir, why would I want to go sit at this woman's house? The woman don't even like me. You can tell she don't approve that you're not dating an African woman. Why you keep wanting to bring me around these people? Why do you need like validation that, oh yeah, I finally have some, like, is that what you need? That's what you're, you're giving me like desperation now. And I straight up told him, I say, that's what you're tripping about. You know that happened on um what Sunday? Nigga, today is Tuesday. You came home and you seemed happy. You were fine. Everything was great. So you're not about to sit up here and tell me that that's what you're mad about. You're not mad about that. You're mad because I left yet again. You're mad because you can't get your way. You're mad because all that little shit that you're used to pulling on other people, you can't pull it on me, baby. I'm not going for it. I'm not going for none of it. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Yeah. You can't pull it on me. I'm not going for it. And you're mad. You're a big man. So he basically starts saying, you're the one that's mad. Hi, hey, you're a big man. Dude. <laughs> he would say all type of stuff. I'm telling y'all, if y'all would, I wish I could have, I would have, I should have recorded it. The stuff he was saying, it sounded like something like a little 16 year old would say. It did not sound like something a almost 37 year old man would be saying. And I told him, I say, what am I mad for? I said, I'm not mad about anything. I'm just telling you about your behavior. You want to date me. You said that you like me. You want to be in a relationship with me. You said all this stuff. You've been running around here saying that you love me, introducing me to all your friends. I haven't introduced you to none of my friends and family. Crickets. You're introducing me to anybody that knows you. You're taking me to church. You're planning a future. Let, let me tell y'all. And this is not even me like trying to like flex or like stud on the man. This man had me picking out furniture. This man wanted to move me to a home. This man wanted to have a house built from the ground up centered around what I liked, what I wanted, what I desired. You wanted me, baby. So why are you so mad? Why? That's not good. And I told him straight up, I say, that's not cute. I say, you don't know how to communicate. I say, you're too old. You're too old to like, I shouldn't have to, after, as a 29 year old, I should not have to tell a almost 37 year old man how to communicate. This, these are things that you should know by now. I'm not going to teach you how to treat me. What's wrong with you? Like, you don't, you don't get it. You don't understand. So he basically, he's now, everything that I'm saying, I'm shutting his ass up, shutting him up. 
everything. It's nothing that he can say. He cannot come back from what it is. I'm, and everything I'm saying, I'm being respectful. I'm not cursing at him. I'm not yelling and screaming. I'm not being erratic. I'm just, I'm, the same way I'm talking right now is how I'm talking to him. How I always talk. Very like one tone, very nice, very sweet. Same way. He couldn't take it. The only thing that this man could say for the rest of the call was, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate what you say. Thank you. I say, so going forward, what is your plan? Do you plan on like working on your behavior or are we like, like, what is it? What is your plan? Because the way you're conducting yourself is very immature. It's very childish. And I'm not really like with that. And if you want to continue to like wine and dine me and take me places and do stuff, you got to check your attitude because I'm not bringing you around my family and you're so frat. You're like, you're, you're so easily bothered and hurt. Like, I'm no, no, I'm not taking your ass nowhere because you don't know how to act. He said, only thing he kept saying is, thank you. I appreciate you. I said, okay, you have a great rest of your day, sweetheart. Hung up the phone. So I sent him a text message and I said something along the lines of, what did I say? Something along the lines of, I wish um, good luck on your search for love and all your future endeavors. Love, my name. <laughs> no response. So a couple hours later, I get a FaceTime. And I say, oh, hey, what's up? I said, so you have you had time to think about like how everything happened? Have you had time to think about just everything? Instantly, he's on 10. I say, oh, this is going to be a quick conversation. I already know. He's telling me, um, I don't understand why I have to ask you to help me um, with my pool table. You say you don't want to help. Okay, go sit down. Uh, you you don't want to do anything. Only thing you care about is your nails. You just want to be cute. You want So what I supposed to do? Want to be ugly? What you think that you're going to get a slave? What you think I'm going to like? I honestly feel like he wanted me to come there and... He wanted me to come there, be cute little arm candy to take around his friends so he can like prance me around, show me off that he finally got a bad bitch. He wanted to have sex. He wanted to get married. He wanted to buy. He just wanted to like put me in a castle and just keep me there and just control me, control the way I think, control my body, control. He just wanted to control me. And then I'm not going for none of that. You can't, I cannot be controlled. I cannot be tamed. And I told him this from Jump Street. You're not the first man I've dated with money. You're not the first person to try and manipulate me and try and like use your money as a way to like keep me. I told him up front that it wasn't going to work. Once I started saying stuff like that, he just got mad and was like, just going off. Saying that he don't need me and he's fine by himself and so on and so forth. Okay, you call me. I didn't call you, sweetheart. I'm not worried about what it is you're saying. I don't care about it. I'm not moved either way because you were pursuing me. I didn't pursue you. You wanted to wine and dine me. You wanted to buy me a home. You wanted me to have your kids. You wanted all this stuff from me. I could have easily manipulated you and tricked you. I even told him on one of our dates, the reason why he keeps running into the same type of women is because he's a lick. He didn't even know what I meant when I said you're a lick. I had to break it down and explain it to him. But that's what you are. You're a lick. You're a walking lick. I'm a talking brick. Talk it. Yeah, that's you. You're a lick. You were a lick. But I didn't feel like I didn't want to do that to you. I genuinely did not because I feel like you don't get any good luck when you play on people's weaknesses. God's not going to bless you for that. So I didn't do it to you. And you were just so shocked and baffled that, dang, I met this girl and she's just so different. She's not trying to like do none of that. She just wants to like have fun. She's just having a good time. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and cap like I ain't, I ain't make him pay for stuff. He still paid for things. But it's like, I wasn't trying to use him. This man was so upset. I say, why are you just sitting quiet? So I started asking him questions. And I'm like, why are you just sitting quiet on the phone? I was like, all you have to like, let me like explain something to you. All you have to say is, 
hey, I don't want to talk anymore. I don't have anything else to say. Let's stop talking and hang up the phone. That's all you have to say. It's not that hard. I say, you really need to go back to like the elementary school days of communication because you get flustered and you just like, you all common sense whew, goes out the window. You don't even know what you're doing anymore. So he says, okay, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I said, okay, have a great rest of your day again. So after he said that, I ain't gonna lie. I said, you know what? This, he thinks that he's like on top of the world. And he thinks that he's so perfect. So let me humble him down back to the ground. So I sent him one text message. Just one. God forgive me. Because I have no business saying none of this stuff. I don't have no business saying it. But... I feel like since he wanted to play and he thought that he was way up here, he thought he was way up here. He thought he was up here. I had to bring his ass back down to his level where the fuck he belonged at. So I'll post the text message somewhere around here. I'll post the text message. And yeah. I blocked him and that was the end of that so the moral of the story is when shamani shows you who they are the first time believe them i don't care how bored you are i don't care how lonely you are i don't care what you got going to do not go back because the second time you go back they're really going to try and like play in your face but i don't think he realized i'm the queen and king of playing you cannot play with me just because I don't play anymore doesn't mean I don't know how to play. I never forgot how to play. I just don't play anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the story time. I have so many more stories to tell you. I have, like, plenty of stories. Stories from high school. Just so many different stories that I could tell y'all. But comment down below and let me know, like, what y'all thought about it. Was I wrong for... Was I wrong for anything? Was I wrong for the way I responded? Was I wrong for that text message? Like, let me know what I could have done differently. Um, yeah. Also, let me know what other kind of story times you guys want to hear. Um, you guys want to hear below. So drop all of that down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.